This video is going to look at some math behind the madness of the concrete lathe workbench. All right, let's start with Hooke's law. Hooke's law says force is equal to k multiplied by x, where x is the length, k is a constant its units. Units are force over length. Hooke's law is everywhere. Um, it's used a lot in engineering. It's used in applied science. Um, it's been around since the 1600s, I think. But one of the most common places you see in everyday life is in regular springs. So let's take a spring and we're going to we'll say this part's fixed. We'll apply a force to here. And that spring is going to compress a little bit. Or maybe it's going to compress a lot. This is the distance, obviously, that the spring compresses, which is x. Now this spring will have some sort of spring rate. And when you order springs or you make springs, you calculate what that is, and they tell you that it's some value of k, and its units could be pounds per inch, or newtons per meter, if you're metric. And the force here required there is related through Hooke's law. Force, remember, is equal to k times x. So this spring rate times this distance that we compress it is going to give us the force that we have. Now instead of a spring, let's consider a simple rod that has some length l and some cross-sectional area A. It's also made out of a material and it has some sort of property called E, which is known as the modulus of elasticity. The modulus of elasticity is essentially a measure of how stiff a material is. You can kind of get that from um, the word elasticity. Now the spring rate for a rod like this, simple rod, is k is equal to the area times the modulus of elasticity over L. So in essence, if we have a rod that where we know the area, we know the material that it's made out of, so we can look up the modulus of elasticity for it, and we also know the length, we can determine what its spring rate is. So in a sense, you can think of a solid bar of material as a spring. With some sort of spring rate k. Now, of course, there's all sort of all sorts of assumptions with this model. Like, for example, we're operating in the elastic area, which basically means we're not loading the material beyond its yield strength. So if we apply a load and take it off, there's no change in the material. But for simple analysis, it's it's a good approximation to determine the stiffness of structures. So for our bench, we have two main requirements. Number one, we want it to be stiff. And number two, we want to have good damping properties. We want it to be stiff because any flex in the bench can put significant load on the lathe and that could cause the lathe bed to flex and it could cause lathe accuracy issues. And we want good damping properties because vibration can also cause a whole bunch of unwanted nasty things while we're cutting. 
So to get the best surface finish and to have the best accuracy, we need a stiff bench with good damping properties. So for the bench, I had this idea to, to make it out of concrete. The simplest way I thought would be to utilize, you know, standard concrete building blocks or cinder blocks. So the largest ones I could easily find around where I live are known as 10 by 8 by 16 blocks, which if you look at it from the top, you know, the blocks have the holes in them. This way they're 16, they're 10 inches this way, and 8 inches high. Interestingly enough, they're actually metric, and if you measure them, you know, with a metric tape measure, you'll find that they're about, they're very close to 240 millimeters, at least as close as I could measure. And the 16 inches, 390 millimeters, and the height is 190. So they're actually smaller than the 10 by 8 by 16, like if you convert that, and they say they make them smaller because by the time you add the mortar onto them, they're actually 10 by 8 by 16. But if you get a ruler out or a, tape, a metric tape measure and actually measure them, they're 240 millimeters, 390 millimeters, and 190 millimeters in height. So, I also use these because they're easy to get and they're very inexpensive. They're precast concrete blocks. So I thought if you take that and if you calc if you stack on top of each other like that, some sort of spacing to be under the lathe feet properly and you'll get about a 32 inch height which is about perfect and then I thought if you put rebar in the center and filled them up with cement you'd have a really good base for a, a bench top lathe but I had two questions or one, how stiff? And two, damping. Or vibration control. Because at the end of the day, I'm going to compare this to a steel bench. I can just go get some 2x2 two two steel tubing, I got a welder, I can cut it, I can weld it up, and I can put the lathe on that 2x2 two two tubing. So let's try to take a back of the napkin approach and figure out how stiff this is going to be. So the way I see it is essentially we have the lathe. Excuse my drawing here. On two supports. These are going to be those concrete blocks. But let's imagine those concrete blocks as springs. You're going to have some sort of K spring rate each of them and let's calculate what that spring rate is so remember like we talked before k is equal to a e over l now when i do most of my calculations like this i prefer greatly to do them in metric it just makes a lot more sense to me um, 
in a lot of the calculations that I do, I use both imperial and metric. Um, a lot of European uh, jurisdictions only deal in metric, but as being a student that's close to the United States, who still is doing a lot of imperial calculations, I've learned to do both. But like I said, I prefer to do it in metric. So let's 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 do it in metric. And I guess this is my video, so we'll do it in metric, but so let's calculate the K. So recall that the block size was this here was 240 millimeters this was 390 so our area is and I put it in meters And when you calculate that out, we'll get 0 0.0936 meters squared. The E for concrete, now this is a debatable subject. Um, apparently there's a wide range of modulus of elasticities for concrete. It depends on how hard it is, how old it is, which those two are directly related. I'm sure it depends on the aggregate um, and a bunch of other things. And I'm not 100% sure if the E's posted online, how that takes reinforcement into account. But I just picked the middle of the road value and just used 20 times 10 to the nine Pascals. And our L, which I said was about 32 inches or 0 0.8 meters. So your K is equal to E over L. And when you do all that, you get the 0 0.0936 times 20 times 10 to the nine, all over 0 0.8. And that is equal to one very, very big number over. 2.34 times 10 to the 9 newtons per meter. So, going back to the lathe, now that we got that figured out, so we have our lathe. It's sitting on two springs with a K value, 2.34 times 10 to the 9 newtons meters. And this was the same. So that's the concrete stiffness it's perhaps a bit simplified but for back of the napkin type calculations it's pretty good so why don't we take a look at a steel bench now so a steel bench I'd probably make out of standard 2x2 two two tubing it's a common workbench material probably 188 wall or 316 thickness. And looking at it from the top, you'd probably have, you know, four legs. You'd put supports in between them. You know, brace accordingly, weld it all up. But I was thinking, how would I quickly compare a steel bench to the concrete one? So, again, let's look at the lathe. 
And you'd put the legs under the appropriate places. And maybe you'd put your supports in between it to add some, you know, rigidity in that direction. But where these, these legs are, you'd, you'd want to put them very close to where the lay support needs to be. Now, again, you can treat those as springs. Except in this case, instead of two, there's going to be four because you only have two in the front and two in the back. So why don't we calculate what that spring rate is going to be? A quick minute. Remember again, we can use the same simple calculation. Now, again, let me say this is a real um, back of the napkin approach. You know, obviously when you add cross bracing in, things are going to get more rigid. But it's kind of a quick way to compare. And, you know, this is for the home shop and we don't want to get too complicated. We could spend hours drawing it up in CAD and doing all kinds of analysis. But, you know, a quick first round approximation will help us get where we want to be. So... Remember, we're our tubing. It's two by two, and in the 188 wall. So your inside square is going to be uh, 1.625 by 1.625. So for your area is. Now I'm going to convert these to millimeters. So this is approximately 51 millimeters. And this is uh, 41.275. So your area is, and then we'll do it in meters again. One squared, and then we're going to subtract the inside area, which would be 0 0.041275 squared. And when you do all that, you're going to get 0 0.008 Actually, I think there's three zeros in there 0 0.012387 meters squared So um, E for steel uh, It's pretty common to see 200 gigapascals is a quick number Interesting that provided the steel is steel, the number is pretty much the same across all varieties of steel. Doesn't mean if it doesn't matter if it's cold rolled, hot rolled, if it's high alloy, low alloy. The stiffness of a material is pretty much a you know function of the molecular properties of that material of itself. Itself, uh, the tensile and yield strengths can be changed drastically, as we all know. But the stiffness can't really be changed all that easily. So anyway, um, so we have our E of 200 gigapascals and our length again is about 0 0.8 meters. And we're going to put that all into K equals AE over L. And to save you all the time doing that, I did that already. And your K is equal to... 0 0.2158 times 10 to the 9 newtons per meter. And I'm going to call this K and we'll use a different color. Well, for this one, we'll keep it this way. And just for the fun of it, because there's probably something wrong with me, I went and did the same thing for. A wood frame you know using what most people use for their wood bench like a 4x4 post and calculated the K value for that and for one of them it was zero point one one times 10 to the 9 newtons per meter. So this is for a 4x4 four four post. And then this was for your 2x2 two two 
steel tubing. So as you can see, the wood is about half the stiffness of steel. Now this is only for one post and maybe we should talk a little bit about that more now when we compare all three, three materials. So we have these values. So when you're dealing with um, springs, when they're in parallel, so when springs are in parallel, so like with our lathe, For concrete, we have two springs and they're in parallel. So we're gonna have K, we'll just call it K and K because they're both the same. And in parallel, you just add them up to figure out the total spring rate for the system. So it's 2K. For steel and for wood, if you're using four posts, it's gonna be 4K because there's four of them, right? So I got our numbers here from our previous calculations. So for our concrete, this is just for one. I'll just put concrete is equal to 2.39 times 10 to the 9. Our K for steel And we just calculated that. Was 0 0.215 times 10 to the 9 Newton meters. And for wood, was, we just had that one too. Just let me write this down. 0 0.111 times 10 to the 9 meters. So for the concrete one, we can multiply this one by 2 because we have two springs. And for the steel and the wood ones, we multiply these numbers by 4. So as you can see, maybe I'll just raise it in a different color. Hopefully you guys can still see it. Take the first one, so this would be about 4.78 times 10 to the 9. That one's going to be, you know, about 0.8. It's dot 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 times 10 to the 9. And this one's 0 0.044 times 10 to the 9. So from this you can see that the concrete is about, you know, four to five times stiffer than the steel, and it's about ten times stiffer than the wood. You know, there are some interesting things to look at this though too. You can see how efficient steel is for the amount of space that it takes up. The concrete blocks are quite large, they take up a lot of physical space, it's going to be quite heavy. The steel is a lot more compact and you get a lot more stiffness out of that, you know, volume of material. So steel per, you know, volume of material is a lot more efficient. And you can see that in the, in the modulus of elasticity, you know, steel was about 200 gigapascals, right? You know, concrete's about 20 and wood is about, it's debatable, but about 10. You know, and that's reflective in these calculations. The good thing about concrete is it's inexpensive to get a lot of it. So, you know, we can just basically use a lot more material and bump up the stiffness. So the next thing we want to look at is damping. So let's take this simple plastic ruler. Let's apply some sort of load. Move it a bit. And we'll watch the response. Let's do it once more. What's happening is I'm applying a load, a vibration setup, 
and then it stops. That act of stopping is due to damping. So let's plot what happened with our ruler. This is time, and this is distance. So we move the ruler down, so I guess we want to call this down, initially. And if you watch the video slowly, you'll find that it goes like this. And eventually it stops, right? Over time. So the first peak's the largest, the subsequent peak's a little bit less, and eventually it stops. Well, if you look at this little curve here, you can draw one here too. This is essentially damping. So let's look at materials specifically. You know, generally machine tools are made out of cast iron. And why is that? Well, let's look at the response of this cast iron and look at the response of steel. So if you look at, you apply a similar experiment and let's say we had a steel ruler, you'd find that steel looks something like this. Now this is exaggerated and there's no units on it and that, but for discussion purposes, the damping properties would look like that. Cast iron would look more like something like this. For the same amount of time. This is the reason why things like these things, tuning forks, are always made out of steel and never cast iron. So how do we quantify damping? Damping is measured generally using a process called log decrement and it's donated by that guy. And the process of log decrement is we've got some sort of response. Log decrement is essentially taking the natural logarithm of the amplitudes of two subsequent waves. And that will equal your log decrement. Now I know at this point it probably feels like we're getting awfully far into a rabbit hole, but we're almost done. The damp or log decrement is used to calculate something called the damping ratio, which is denoted donated by zeta. And the damping ratio is simply a unitless number that is used to describe how much damping is in a system. So for any system with small amounts of damping, like a workbench, and not like a shock absorber in your car, unless your shocks are completely wore out, we can calculate the damping ratio using our log decrement value. So your zeta, or your damping ratio, is equal to your log decrement value divided by two pi. And this is a quick approximation. There is actually a more formal calculation you can use to calculate your damping ratio using log decrement. And there's a square root here, and this happens to be squared. There's some other stuff under there. But for small amounts of damping, uh, this works essentially the same way. Since nobody can agree on anything, when you start looking at different materials, you'll find damping ratios given, you'll find other things given, and one of the things you'll stumble across is something called specific damping. 
for the sake of the discussion we're having here, again, this is making a few assumptions about low amounts of damping. We can say that two times the damping ratio or zeta is equal to your specific damping over two pi. So Y here is donated to specific damping. Y over two pi, which is equal to your log decrement over the single pi which this two, if you just multiply this down here, you can see that um, that's where that kind of came from. Uh, the reason I bring up specific damping is because I could find values for cast iron, for steel, and for concrete for specific damping, and that's how we can compare them all. So from published data, we can determine that cast iron is essentially very similar to concrete with, in terms of damping, which is a very good thing for our workbench. Now I'm not going to cast a cast iron workbench, but I can cast concrete workbench.